Hello foam fighters, I'm Dr. Flux. Today's video, we're looking at the Nerf Elite 2.0 Shockwave, and we're gonna see if it is in fact better than the original Surge Fire, and what kind of upgrades it brings to the table. So, let's dive right into it. The Nerf Elite 2.0 Shockwave. As you can quickly tell, this is a reskin of the Nerf Elite Surge Fire, and they have actually minimized some of the plastic usage in the drum, and I think the overall aesthetics of this look a little bit better. Now on the package, it has claims of shooting up to 90 feet, and this comes with 30 darts, 15 of the blue dart with the orange head, and then 15 of the orange dart with the blue head. Let's go ahead and open this up and see what else is in here. Okay, so here we can see that we have, we have the rail attachment points here, you have an in-strike barrel attachment, and then a stock attachment point. If we compare that to the original Surge Fire, uh, so they've given us a back attachment point, a forward barrel attachment point, and they've added another rail attachment point back here, and they've still retained a sling point here, and given us another one here. So not bad, so it is kind of better. I will say they did give us a much cheaper drum. This thing has uh, a lot less plastic than the original drum. I will be checking to see if my modded drum can actually fit in here. So I'm curious to see if that works. But yeah, let's go ahead and open this up. So just a little note, you uh, can't really load the drum well when the darts are in it. So making this thing, you know, hot swappable for drums is actually kind of difficult. I'm noticing. But it looks like you can fit, or can you? Let's take, let's see. Let's see if we can put the old one in the old surge fire. Okay, so it does, it does work in the old one. Yeah, so that works fine. And of course, if you want to take the drums out, there's just a push in an Allen, and you can pop those out. So let's see if I can put my modded drum in here. That is weird. They really use a different size. So I just had a little trouble putting this in, so I'm gonna check the size. Oh, I guess it's not really a, it's 11, or 17.25. 17.25. So it's the same size, why, why are we having trouble? The other thing that kind of makes me nervous to put this in here is I don't see how I'd get it out. As you can see in the other design, I can easily get to this hole and pop it out. So I don't know. I think if I think I could get it to fit in there, but I don't know if I can take it back out. So for now, we're gonna put the uh, stock drum in there. So after taking this thing out of the package, I can uh, clearly say the ergonomics of it is okay. I do like the Elite 2.0 hand grips. I think they're all right. They're a little bit chunky feeling, but they work. Uh, they at least give me enough real estate to hold the thing. So that's that's a plus. The forward prime action uh, pistol grip up here is, is pretty good too. Pretty comfortable, has a nice feel to it.
I did notice I tried to attach a barrel onto the front here. I actually have a barrel from the Echo and it was a little bit tough to get on there for the first time. Actually, it still is. You really gotta push down hard on this thing. But, but once the barrel's on, it's not going anywhere, which is kind of cool. That does bring me to one of the drawbacks of this blaster. I was having issues occasionally with even elite darts not leaving this barrel properly. I think the barrel is pretty tight. If you look in there, you can see that it, it's actually, I can't even put my finger in there. It's a pretty uh, tight barrel for that much travel. And I really had issues with the Dart Zone waffles or the Adventure Force waffle. They were just too, they kept hitting the sides and actually were plopping out sometimes. So I really had some inconsistent performance with the darts, as you can see here when I took this out to the range. So let's talk about the standard FPS I was getting with the Shockwave. This thing uh, actually was hitting around 57 average FPS, which is pretty low. And I think part of that is due to the very inconsistent uh, fluctuation in FPS. I was getting higher numbers and then lower numbers. I tried to drop some of my outliers, but they just, it had such a wide range, it really pulled down the average FPS. So I'm not sure what that's all about. I had much more reliable uh, numbers with the Surge Fire. And now the Surge Fire is not a great performer as it is. So the fact that the Shockwave is getting similar, if not worse numbers is kind of disconcerting. I was a big fan of the Surge Fire when it came out and when I actually purchased it, did a review on it. I was pretty sad to see its performance. It was not a good performer. And I love the aesthetics of these type of blasters, but when they don't perform well, it's kind of hard to uh, really get behind them. So I was hoping with Elite 2.0, you know, this reskin of the Surge Fire that I would at least get a little performance boost, but I'm not seeing that, unfortunately. Now, as far as how the blaster looks, I think it's beautiful. I, I love the way the aesthetics are. I love all the tactical rails they've thrown on this thing. They've given us an extra sling point. They've given us a in-strike mounting point for the back and then the front. I mean, that's really cool stuff to see. But if the performance isn't there, I mean, why would I want to put a barrel on here? Because that will actually lower its performance even more. I mean, when it comes to looking cool, I mean, it, it's got, you know, it's got my vote, but performance wise, I can't get behind it. So to wrap things up, would I recommend this? If you're looking for a performance blaster, no, I can't, I can't recommend it. I would uh, recommend you go get an Alpha Trooper, you know, or something, you know, if you want a flywheel, I'd recommend just grabbing a Strife. So is this something new and exciting from what we had before? Not really. Um, I mean, other than looks, I mean, if I'm just grading it on just performance wise, I'd say no, it's nothing new and exciting. Um, but if we're talking about looks, I'd say, yeah, looks great. Now, if your whole thing is about looking cool and you know, maybe going, maybe doing cosplay type stuff, or if you got some type of event you wanna go to and paint this thing up or something, I think it'd be awesome. Uh, before I wrap this video up though, I wanna point out some of its mod potential there are screws in this blaster. You could take it apart. There's more screws than I was anticipating, which is a good sign. Uh, you could do a spring upgrade on this. Uh, I might come back to this in the future and see if we can get a better, better performance out of this because I, I would love to see this thing actually perform better. So I just want to throw that out there because there has been a lot of speculation as to uh, these new Elite 2.0 blasters being able to be modded. And I will say from looking at this, yes, this could be modded. I think you could even bring Slamfire back to this. And I, I didn't mention that, but this does not have Slamfire. 
but the surge fire did. So I, I imagine we could correct that. I'd have to look at the internals and compare it to the surge fire, but we could maybe bring the slam fire back and also just increase the overall performance of this. So that is an option. Well, I'm Dr. Flux. That pretty much wraps up this review of the Elite 2.0 Shockwave. Let me know in the comment section if you think this is a better version of the Elite Surge Fire, or if this is just a subpar reskin of that blaster. I'm curious to see what you all have to say. Well, if you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, happy nerfing.